Hello there, EM Fresh here, and welcome to my channel or my website, uh, freshtothextreme.com. And today I am riding at uh, Kakapon State Forest uh, in uh, or near Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. And what you see in the view there is the uh, reservoir. And that there is the golf course with the Kakapon State or Kakapon Resort. Um, and this is where we're riding to today. We're riding to the top of that ridge right up there. Okay, and now we're going to fade into the, uh, or me, taking the lead. Okay, and this loop here is the, uh, they call it rock and roll. Um, like I say, uh, the people riding with me today are your uh, favorite riders, or my buddies, basically, uh, Roger and Larry. Okay. You guys know who Roger is. You may not know who Larry is. Um, uh, Larry is a, uh, uh, a uh, we call it an XC gravel racer. So he can ride hundreds and hundreds of miles at a time. And uh, you'll get the chance to see what he can do here uh, shortly. Um, like I said, this is the warm up, a warm up loop. We're trying to uh, get our bearings to know uh, where we are going, you know, because uh, we never rode here before, and there is no one here. I thought there was going to be a shuttle to take us up uh -oh. to the very top overlook, but uh, even if there was, uh, I don't think uh, Roger uh, wanted that to happen today. He wanted to enjoy nature, quote unquote. As you can see me here, I'm struggling a little bit. Uh, my legs are a bit tight from uh, right, uh, from uh, driving up here. It was a two-hour drive. As you know, we're from West Virginia, or Morgantown, West Virginia, and uh, we are. Uh, and I am uh, sort of tired. You know, my legs are, like I say, my legs are tight. Just trying to warm up. And uh, usually Roger or Larry is leading, but Roger. Uh, uh, has the same uh, problem I do, but his leg, his muscles are much much larger than mine, so it takes him about six miles to warm up. Okay, okay so uh, this uh, section of the trail is kind of boring. We are going to literally pedal 1,800 feet uh, up to the top of the overlook. Um, I didn't think it would be this hard to get up there. Uh, like I said before, I was hoping for a shuttle to take us to the top and then we could take, uh, uh, I think it's uh, called Middle Fork or something like that. Some trail called Middle Fork down. I've been watching some other guys' uh, YouTubes and trying to get a feel of where to go. And uh, this trip was my idea, so I'm the one that has to, uh, <laughs> has to lead. Of course, I did... Uh, it's nothing like anything that you see on the internet when you're uh, watching someone else's uh, video. Um, they only put like little uh, excerpts uh, in their uh, videos. So right now we're climbing, okay? And then we're gonna be pushing. And if you want to skip ahead, because uh, um, to, let me see, uh, I think the timestamp is 18 minutes. No, no, it's 14 minutes, 36 seconds. Yeah, it's uh, 14 minutes, 36 seconds, and you can catch the most exciting part of the of the video, which is the descent all the way back down. So I think uh, we climbed a total of thir almost 3,000, 3,500 feet in total. Our Stravas were inaccurate. I, went back and recalculated at the end because it didn't seem right. It said we only did 1800, but I think because we were so remote and we were in uh, uh, like on this, on the side of a mountain that blocked the, our signals. Um, but it was a, it was a, a very hefty climb. Um, but uh, right now uh, we're uh, 
uh, cl uh, climbing. We're trying to uh, just get our bearings here. Um, as you can see here, I lose my place here on the trail and then uh, the veterans there have to uh, <laughs> take charge. But uh, it's just a, a matter of following the flags, that these little tiny little flags you see on the ground. And come to find out I was actually on the right track. It just, we just missed the flag. It was buried underneath some of the leaves there. And so we got to cross back over to the, uh, the side of, of the, the little creek there that we came over. Now you can see me pushing up the trail. Okay. So here we are. We're back on the trail, cruising. And uh, like I said, I'm not showing you all, but I'm just showing the main parts. Now we're back at the beginning. If you didn't know, notice that little bridge there. Okay, now we're going to head up to, uh, it's called the, uh, I think, Bat, Bat Field or Bat Parking Lot or something like that. That's actually where we should have probably parked it. That's the main area where you can uh, catch the best trails. Like it's, you know, this is a good warm up trail right here. This is pretty fun coming down to, don't get me wrong, but as you'll see, if you skip ahead, uh, if you were to skip ahead to the that point I told you, 14 minutes or six seconds, we'll ride that and there's all sorts of uh, cool features, rocks, you know, uh, you know, rock uh, paths and stuff. It's pretty cool whoever made those trails there. Um, but right now we're i'm just showing you the scenery so you could get a feel of the fall because that's what we're here for we're here to enjoy ourselves like roger said we're here to enjoy ourselves not a race <laughs> he's telling me russell's not a race well, i don't think i'm racing i'm just trying to keep up with y'all you know i'm trying to uh uh pedal ahead of them you know let me tell you my strategy i'm trying to pedal ahead of them so that i can rest you know, and then they catch up and I can <laughs> speed up again. But uh, I was doing pretty good for the first, you know, first six miles or so. But um, it just seemed like we just kept going up, up, up and up and up and up and up, as you can see. I'm trying to get uh, hoping for a downhill somewhere. Uh, I mean, the paths are really nice, really flowy, as you can see here. But uh, Soon I will uh, quickly run out of energy and uh, there's a lot of trees down but uh, someone's came out here and uh, maintained them maintained them very well like moved the trees out of the way there's nothing there was no trees down you know believe it or not in our uh, way <clears throat> okay I'm trying to get some speed here get my adrenaline back <clears throat> okay, so I think I'm doing pretty good being a leader. You know, leading the uh, leading the pack today, leading us through the uh, wild. It seems like there's we're just riding aimlessly through the woods, but there is a path there. Uh, you can barely see it. Okay, and now we're crossing over. All right, and this is actually the end of the trail. We got a little lost here. I think this is the end of called the uh, Elon Middle Fork. And we're trying to do it backwards. We did this wrong. <laughs> hey, you'll see we're gonna get, I cut out most of this right here. We're just flabbergasted of, and confused of which way to go. So I'm gonna cut most of this out. And that guy up there says, hey, you're going the wrong way. And he told me. So as you can see, we're supposed to be coming down this section here, and we will. Yeah, so this is when I just run out of energy, run out of steam, and Larry says, okay, I'll take the lead here. And so uh, you can see him nimbly uh, riding over everything. And I'm glad he does take the lead because I'm, I couldn't keep it up for much longer. Uh, I'll take the, I'll, 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 I'll get a chance to repeat myself here, but uh, Larry gives me some pretty good tips. He uh, uh, he told me he raced. Uh, he was in 14 races this year. Okay, if you can follow his Strava, if you go and uh, get Strava and uh, just type in, I think Larry Paris, and you can see all the races he rides. It's just unbelievable how far he can ride. 
Um, I think the last race he did was, I think 125 miles. I think he did 150 this year. And he said this is pretty much without stopping. And without stopping, uh, he uh, uh, pretty much they say they get like six or seven, like five minute breaks or something. That's just insane. <laughs> and then they ride 150 miles or whatever. So 14 races. So this is nothing to him. He has his uh, gear on the, uh, I guess the, the, uh, I think it's the highest gear. Like I have mine on the highest or the lowest gear, the one that spin that makes you spin really fast. <laughs> It's like all the lowest gear. That's how strong his legs are. It's not even phasing him. He's just coolly uh, pedaling up the hill. You can see him getting away from us a little bit. Uh, and that's okay because I think uh, he sort of challenges me. He actually gives me uh, something to look at. Uh, I feel like I'm just going, no, I don't know where the, uh, know where the heck I was going before. <laughs> So, uh, he tells me he has never rode this before, but something tells me he has. He, uh, or somewhere near here, like he's very, uh, or maybe just his uh, vet veteran skills in mountain bike riding or whatever. He, this stuff is not even phasing him. Yeah, when he's riding over these rocks and whatnot, he's waiting for us. Uh, Roger's not quite warmed up yet, but you're gonna see him uh, here shortly. When we cross back over, and to the, uh, um, the side where we start making the major push up to the top of the overlook. Um, and here's that parking lot I was talking about. I think it's called Bat Field uh, Parking Lot. And this is where if you want to get the good riding, if you're advanced, or not the advanced, but intermediate, you want to ride the good uh, good trails, like it's a good starting point uh, um, to see all what pretty much uh, Kakapun has to offer. Uh, if you want to skip that bottom part there where we just rode up, uh, all the trails are nice. But uh, you, you, like I'm saying, if you if you hold on, you know, or skip ahead to to uh, the 14 minutes 36 seconds, uh, you will see what I'm talking about. It just gets really, really exciting. <laughs> I just wish we would have done that instead of climb or pushed our, pushed our way to the top. The overlook was good too, as you're going to see here, but I mean, it was well worth it. I mean, this the uh, scenery is very nice, very relaxing. See the fall leaves on the ground, the trees and whatnot. Might seem like I'm repeating myself, but it's just, I mean, it's what we're doing. We're enjoying this. I never thought in a million years I'd be doing this type of uh, riding. See, we're riding up. You know, most of the videos see people coming down because that's what you're supposed to be doing. Now I'm pushing, I'm pushing, and it's a long way. It's a, like a mile straight up. Actually, a mile and a half from here straight up. There's Raj, I was going too slow. Somehow he gets energy from somewhere. I have no clue where he gets it from. And he just pushes ahead of everybody, just goes. He's gone, okay? Larry's, I think Larry's behind him. He's just hitting his breath. He was leading us, you know, for six miles or so. Okay, so now we're at the top of the ridge here. Okay, so we're making our way to the, uh, what I thought was the overlook, but it's not. It's just a little camping area where you can uh, camp. You know, you can, I guess you could rent these little uh, camping cabin tent things. It looks pretty nice. Larry said he would uh, actually rent one, actually. If he's a camper too. He'll go out and ride and then camp. Okay, so we got a little picture there. I thought we're going back down, but no, the overlook is you know, two miles ahead on top of the ridge. So I skipped ahead, as you can see. <laughs> and I'm like really rich. I have no energy. Actually, my hands are shaking from a sugar low or like having no sugar in my body. I like have no more energy. I don't have any more energy to even ride down. Okay, but I get my picture. We take pictures, you know, even this was just the, uh, uh, worth it coming up. Uh, you didn't see it, but uh, Larry just gave me some type of energy gel bars, and oh my god, I just like got an instant rush of energy. Thank you, Larry, for that. Now, Larry's gonna take the lead, and uh, quite frankly, I didn't think he could do this. Now, this in my I call it a diamond flow trail, okay? Not a jump, but flow, okay? Now this is really, really steep. This is what we were pushing up before. You saw I'll be pushing it. it. Took us 
you know, a mile and a half, but I skipped over because it's not worth watching. Okay, but this is steep, and I thought I was just going to overtake Larry because I'm, of course, I'm a downhill uh, bike rider, I thought, but uh, no. Uh, we are picking up speed, you know. If you see the GoPro start shaking, see it's shaking, trying to keep us stable, you know. It's doing a really good job. It's dark and it's not, it's keeping us stable. We are going fast. You know, we're going fast down this hill. And those rocks are just loose. And uh, I was waiting for Larry to pull over, but he didn't. And he's going to carry us all the way down over all these features. Okay. Yeah, look, this is so exciting. This is what I came for right here. <laughs> It's so steep. You get the GoPro, man. I wish there was a way you could see how steep this was. If anyone ever rode down this, you would know what I'm talking about. This is unbelievably steep, and we are just taking it. And what's unnerving about this part is that Raj is behind me, and I can hear his brakes just the screaming, and I can hear him, hear him on me. I think at one point when we go around this corner, uh, he actually hits my tire. He hits my tire, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And he can't stop because I think, I know his rotors are, I think he should have 180, 180 millimeter rotors, but I mean, because of his size, he's like 6'6 or something like that. Yeah, 6'6, 250 or something. He should have like 200 millimeter rotors on him because he is not stopping. Like he's like on my on my tail. I'm going, I'm trying to keep up. Larry just speeding ahead here. And there's no brakes here. We're coming down this. And uh, the, the GoPro, is, is the, its horizon level is making us seem like we're not, but we're, we're catching air here. I mean, we're going, we're going fast, dangerously fast. Whereas if, you know, one parallel rock or log or something under this leaves, under these leaves, we hit one of those, you're going down. Okay, so I think we are at a portion where it gets really, really rocky. And this is going to take us into what is called the Giddy Up Trail. Uh, and the only way to take this is fast. Like if you go too slow, you're going to fall because the rocks are so loose. Larry's taking it though, man. Look at that. I am very, very, very amazed. What can I say of Larry? I, Larry is that guy on your... It, it, this is nothing to do with mountain bike. I just remind me, Larry reminds me of this guy on my basketball team. My, one of my friends. One of my friends. Uh, Dave, if he's watching, that the guy that, not very flashy, okay, but okay. Let me tell you about Dave on our basketball team. He the best fundamentals, the best everything, okay. When it come, we uh, won the uh, our basketball championships in high school or varsity, okay, undefeated, okay. Now award ceremonies come up for the MVP. You know, all of us thought the showboaters, dunkers, slammers, and whatnot, thought we were gonna get the MVP. But guess who's the MVP? Dave does. Why? Because he has the best fun, he has the best stats. He scored, actually scored the most points. But he wasn't flamboyant about it. He just solid, like solid all the way around. And that's what Larry, he is the MVP, buddy. <laughs> he just totally like shocked me here. I was like, I couldn't believe it. And he's going still, he's still going. And I'm not saying that because all you see him doing, if you see him on Facebook or or uh, you or uh, Strava or wherever he's right, he puts pictures on his racing. It just seems like he's on flat land, you know, on a gravel bike, you know. But he's not showing us this part. Like he's told me that. Oops, oh yeah, see that ramp I took. Man, this is really fast. You see that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought here. But this is the part I was talking about, like. Man, I wish I'd done this at the beginning. I would have done a few loops of this. There's some parts we missed that I, I, uh, I there were some ramps and uh, there, there's a little miniature wheel tail. There was even a little miniature uh, tabletop here. Some middle little, little table tabletop. I didn't couldn't oh, yeah, jump it because of on the high tower. I have I took one of my tokens out. Where's your tabletop? And so I'm <laughs> right now I have my I'm suspension set up there, to be man. plush. So there's another tabletop, miniature tabletop. Oh, if, they, if I had all my tokens in my air ran firm, I would have just probably launched that. But we're still going fast, still fun going over that stuff. And man, okay, and I thought Larry, I thought I would take the lead. I thought this would be my time to shine. 
but uh, I'm actually glad Larry did, you know, because it, it showed me another style, like how he uh, uh, maneuvered over the rocks. And he's riding pretty high on the saddle too. What anybody say he's like on his seat, like he's not like. Uh, I mean, he's pretty much he's about as tall as us, I think, you know. So that just shows you what balance he has. Like when I see if Rogers ahead of me, and I see his him drop his dropper post down, he sits down, he sits down like really low because of his center, to keep his center of gravity low. I know we're about to go on a steep section, you know, like it's going to be steep if he's sitting down, like hunched down, you know. Well, Larry, I couldn't tell, like, am I, you know, where am I, what am I doing? Like, he's just riding normally. And here's a little rock section. Now, this part kind of threw us off a little bit, threw me off, I knew, but it seems as if you can't ride it. It's unrideable, but once we got the hang of it, uh, and it's going to get a little worse here, we thought. It doesn't look like you can ride this stuff. You know, someone deliberately put this, these features here in such a way that will mess with your mind. <laughs> it messes with your mind and make it feel like you can't ride it. Like, you know, you want to be, but you can't. You just can't put on brakes. You just got to pedal over as fast as you can. Okay. Okay, here we're deciding where to go. We're going to take Middle Fork back because it's getting dark. As you can see, the GoPro is making the, uh, providing artificial light for us so we can see. And now here's the part I was talking about. This, this gets kind of technical, very technical. I almost, I'm looking for a way around it. We thought we might have to walk it, but uh, once we just start riding, if we just, you know, start, just, just start cycling our legs, we were able to pretty much just cycle over all this stuff. It doesn't seem like you can, but you can't. You know, I had a few pedal strikes and my handlebars were a bit wide. I got the 800 millimeter handlebars uh, because I have big long arms, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that gives me more of it. Larry, see Larry up ahead of me, he's just taking off. Like he's riding it just, and then I take his lead and say, okay, if he can ride it, I'm going to try to ride it before I fall off the side. You know, lose my balance and fall off the side of the uh, cliff there. But uh, see, this looks horrible, but it's actually someone strategically placed all these rocks right in a pattern. It's weird, like, you know, if you were to rise a few times, you could ride this all the way, you know, you, you could ride all the way, even though it may not seem so, because the rocks are just patterned. Like someone, it's like making a tile, tile floor or something, like just put a mismatch. But if you know where to go, you keep your momentum, you can ride over all the, the rocks in a nutshell. I want to keep repeating myself there. <laughs> but you, if you just got to come and ride for yourself to know what I'm talking about. It might seem you're, you're, you're like you're going, you just want to give up, but you know, just start pedaling. You start pedaling, you get over it. Okay. Now, there's a few parts here where, you know, it's kind of, you know, like they just say, it messes with your mind right here, actually. Like, can I get down this? But there's a path, there's a line there. You know, take a little break there because. It's pretty steep down on the side. But Larry's taking it like a champ. He's soon we won't even see him. He just keeps riding. And uh, my, uh, I have a pretty high travel. I think I have 170 millimeters. Uh, the, well, I, you probably saw some of my other videos where I upgraded my high tower to 170 millimeter fork, and then the uh, I think I have 160 on the back with the Cascade Link. And so it's working very well. I don't, I took the spacer out and I wish I hadn't, if I had known that we were, it was like this, I would have kept it in. I would have been riding on top of this stuff very smoothly. But uh, it rides good in a plush feel, but when you get technical like this, I don't like to d dive deep into the travel. I like just staying at that 30% until I need the travel. But, uh, yeah, Larry is taking this. I'm just taking his lead here. I'm like, if Larry can do it, I can do it. You know. And he's going there. Roger's behind us. Where's Roger at? He's behind us. You know, those big fellas gotta take, you know, we gotta take our time, you know. We gotta, <laughs> if we fall, it's gonna hurt, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, that's not taking it wrong. This is the first time we're riding this in. 
I'm surprised that Larry's writing is so good. Like, so just something tells me he wrote this before. Like, he must have come up here and practiced or something. Just no way. I'm like, how in the world is he just going around all these features and stuff and no stopping and no uh, second guessing himself? You know, but you know, not to his to his credit, he's a veteran here. I think he's probably the more, most veteran writer I have ever ridden with. Like, there's just certain tricks of the trade, different secrets that I'm trying to learn just because he rides so far. He has a, he's an endurance, we call it enduro, XC's road, every single type of brace, you know. Um, and he pretty much knows what, do, knows what to do when it comes to that. So I'm just, okay, uh, especially with the gel packs. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't be able to do this right now. I'd probably have had a, a, a diabetic attack or something from not having any sugar. <laughs> that's not funny, but, you know, that's where I was, you know. Handshaking. Roger. Behind us. He's ecstatic, man. He, uh, there's a drop there. I think he took it. I, don't, I can't, I can't remember. I wish I was behind him. But I think we went around it, but I think he uh, took the, the drop there. Uh, We'll come again next year and we'll ride all the, we'll probably spend more time down this section here. I forget the middle fork section, what they call it. Uh, right where that uh, bat parking lot is. Okay, so we're almost, uh, we're almost to the, um, it's not the bat, but we're headed back to the part where we are, our parking lot where we parked at. <laughs> okay, but we still, if you remembered, uh, this is where I just cut it short because we rode the opposite side. There's no way to to get actually up it without pushing and it's very dangerous. See how slip steep it is right there? Yeah. So we're still trying to, some place you just gotta walk if you're not used to, but you can ride it. Now, there are lines there and that just goes with the, uh, you just, if you're local this area, I bet, you know, someone would put a video on there, they'd probably see him just like flying through this section. Just flying. You know, you can't guess yourself, second guess yourself on this section. Um, I'm saying this after the fact because in my mind, I always replay. And as I watch this, I, you know, tell myself, man, I could have rode that if I went that line there. Like, see how the trees are weaving in and out there. And, uh, <clears throat> I don't see myself as quite a beginner anymore. I'm like almost at that intermediate phase. Like I guess I haven't really rode like this since this year. You know, when I, uh, when I met Roger in, eight, in April or so, April, he started riding. Actually, I think it was later than that because I started riding downhill. And before I was just on the e-bike. I was the high tower just hanging on the wall, <laughs> you know. I would never be riding this if I hadn't have met Rogers. Just, just know that, okay? I would never be riding. I would not be riding this, this, this stuff right here. Just, I'd be too scared. And uh, you know, there's different progressions. It's just like I would see how steep that is down there. I just would never be doing it. You know. And uh, you know, that time I rode with Roger and then a guy named Liam or whatever. That just opened my eyes to like, oh my gosh, I might be able to do this, you know? And then uh, I was glad they waited for me because some of this stuff is pretty like uh, heart wrenching, you know? Do a little walking. I'm just trying to give you a gist of, to show you, you know, we are, we never rode this trail before, so don't judge us too harshly, but it's a fun trail. Even just walking it, like, you feel like you're a uh, pioneer or something, or uh, you call those people exploring the, uh, the mountains, Mountaineer, <laughs> West Virginia Mountaineers, yeah. So it just feels like uh, you're, you know, like you're uh, just exploring. I think that's what it is about the mountain bike riding. You you go to a place, you know, you can go to the city, you can travel to the beach and go on vacation and stuff, but this is like raw and you have control using your own power, your own life force, <laughs> basically, to maneuver over these rocks and stuff you know yeah someone made the pass for us thank you got thank you thank you for those who made the path the trailblazers i guess i'll call them you know but it's like oh my gosh it's like an experience that 
you've never felt before, you know. And as I get older, this stuff is just like memorable. Like it's, I mean, this park is amazing. Like all of them that I've written, I'm just thankful and blessed to be uh, able to ride, you know. The ride out here is just amazing. You know, so peaceful, so, and you'll see me say it, I'm not just trying to make the video longer or whatever. It's just so, you know, just, you can't believe just, you know, how much of life you have not seen, you know. You know, in school, you know, they're telling you to go to college and all this stuff. Yeah, and you did it, you did this, you did your best, you, you know, but, you know, there's something missing, you know, and that is adventure, you know, this is adventure. You know, it's exciting, you have adrenaline, you know, uh, and if anyone's out there thinking about getting started in this, you know, take your time, don't try to uh, rush it, you know, just start off slow, you know, start on your rail trail system. I ride rail trails still all the time, you know, for my endurance, because it's very beautiful. There's rail trails, according to uh, Larry, man, you can go all over the world, all over the United States. They have a trail that goes from, like in Pittsburgh, you know, to DC, I'm like, what? All the way to DC, Allegheny Passage. You know, he said he did that and he camped. Like, it took him seven days, he camped, and there's uh, bed and breakfast, all sorts of pubs and brew. Man, that sounds, that's adventure right there. That's that's, a, that's what I want to do, you know? <laughs> so, and I'm going to do it, you know? So, you know, if, you know, the key is just getting your body in shape. You know, keep your body in shape, keep it healthy. Don't overdo it, you know? Um, just your role, there's no point in it. You're not, we're not going to be Olympic champions or downhill champions, but this is, you know, the fitness that we have is pretty, you know, we'll get there, you know, we'll, just to move and to move quickly, get their drilling going is the name of the game. Stay healthy, stay happy, you know, a little money to keep your bike from running. <laughs> Yeah, because it's an expensive uh, ordeal if you're going to do the adventure route like Larry does. And, uh, but, I mean, you don't have to go very far, most of us. Some of the time, the stuff is just right in your backyard. Like, I lived in Morgantown for almost 15 years before I discovered that I, we had Cooper's Rock. I'm like, that's only like wait, five miles from my house. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Man. Like, I'm looking on YouTube, like, you know, Whistler and stuff and all this. It's just right there. It's like all the right there and the parks are are uh, beautiful. I mean, man, we got uh, all sorts of beauty, beautiful parks. There's so many beautiful people making these stuff that are in touch with the nature, you know. So uh, anyway, we're almost back at the end and we're going back down. This is a different trail than we came up. Okay, this is not the same one. There's a, there's a lot of trails here. I thought, you know, that we took most of them, but you know, we even haven't even scratched the surface of what Kakapon State Forest has to offer. And it's just nice to ride different places too. I mean, you have Cooper's Rock. I ride that every day, pretty much, you know, or at least three or four times a week. And if, if I just rode that for the rest of my life, it'd be just what I need. It's everything. But like I say, it's it's just an adventure to go out. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's a little, little jump there. And there he's speeding ahead. <laughs> yeah, he's going. Yeah, just an adventure to get out there. Just get out there, walk or hike or something. If you're watching this, I'm not. I lost some subscribers. Someone emailed me and said, oh, I don't like your, you know, I put my bike video or something up there. I, my bike arrives. Somebody didn't like that. I'm like, you know, I ride my bikes more than I ride my van in my truck. <laughs> you know, like that's why I'm like so proud of them because it's like I was fat and I it couldn't move hardly. But this, you know, so if you see me bragging about my bikes and stuff, it's, you know, it's probably not to see it me bragging, just me like saying that, hey, I can ride these now. I'm not a fat, fat ass or whatever. <laughs> I can do it. I'm something, you know, I am somebody. <laughs> so, and put yours on, you know, right? You, let me see those videos you got, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, it's not about subscribers to me, you know, but 
you know, it does kind of hurt your feelings sometimes when you're, you know, you hear people talk about stuff. But hey, you're doing it to stay healthy. It's not a competition. You know, I'm not trying to compete against anybody. I totally get my butt smoked by everybody. Everybody out there, I'm not even a, you know, I'm just happy to be right. <laughs> okay, so I'm not a champion, world champion rider. It never will be. Okay, and have no desire to be. I just like riding my boys here, Larry and Roger, and whoever wants to ride, I'll ride with them. You know, if I ride, I want to keep up, be able to keep up, you know, have the equipment to do so. And on that note, we are back at the end of this trail. It took us a total of probably three hours and 30 minutes to do the whole thing. We have a bunch of stops and overlooks and whatnot. But, uh, it was a very nice ride, a very memorable ride. I'm glad these guys were with me. I'm glad they came. I was afraid they weren't gonna come, but I'm so blessed to have these two gentlemen here riding with me. We had some brews afterwards and uh, went home with a wonderful lifetime memory. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe.